we all have enough stresses in our lives. Now, I want to take one of those stresses off your shoulders, dealing with that pesky Stafford Gambit. Now, I played this game, and I think this sums up a few of the key things which I bear in mind when I'm facing the Stafford, how to take the sting out of its tail. Okay, let's get into it. So, I got into this game on Leeches, and, you know, the Stafford Gambit is where they go symmetrical here, give you this pawn. They take here, it's like a Petrov position, and if they give you a pawn for free, i.e. developing here, letting you trade like that, you know, we've won this pawn on this square, and we can now defend our hanging pawn in the middle. So that's that's the Stafford. But I, I, I know you guys will have played this, and you've probably been, uh, you know, destroyed in these lines a few times, as I know I, I have. Um, but I've worked out a few things uh, to, get, to get around that. So, firstly, we defend the center, creating a solid structure. Now, you might say, oh, is this a little unambitious, you know, blocking in this bishop? But the thing is here, the bishop has a really crucial role in defending this, this g4 square. Uh, a lot of the tactics uh, that the Stafford player has is around this square, and maybe queen here, maybe trying to checkmate you, or something like that. Often pawn push, knight in attacking this classically weak uh, square in front of the king, this f2. So, we're trying to stop this with this. Number one idea, all right? Now, they often, especially the more refined Stafford players, go for this line, where they try and reinforce this square to try and get the knight in there. Now, we stop that. Now, there's another move here, which is this and this, to take the sting out of this bishop. That's a very good way to play, uh, but also just this is very solid, stopping anything coming here. Now, queen comes in. Now, we'd love to play like that and force a trade of pieces, given that we're up a pawn. Now, you can tell, guys, I'm not very fun at pies. You know, I love, I, I just love taking the fun out of Stafford players' games, honestly. I can tell, they annoy me. They annoy me. I think, I can tell they're, they've watched an Eric Rosen video. Eric. Uh, which Eric is it? You know, you know the Eric that always talks about the Stafford, right? Yeah, I've watched one of his videos. They're like, mm -hmm, I'm going to I'm going to destroy someone in the Stafford, you know, and <sighs> it annoys me. Just play a beautiful, clean game of chess. Don't go for tricks. It doesn't help you improve long term. So, right. Now, the entrance says you can castle here, but I recommend not. I recommend putting the rook there and trying to castle queenside. I know that looks silly, but they're not really lined up to attack you on the, on the queenside, if that makes sense. Like, all their pieces are sort of facing this side of the board. You know, the rook. So, to me, it makes more sense to actually just develop, develop, lift the queen and castle the other way. Even though that looks really slow, it's actually pretty safe, I've found anyway. So, developing the knight to take. Uh, to sort of block the queen from hitting this b2 square, and then preparing to move the bishop out, which we can now do with a bit of tempi on the queen, maybe. Now, if queen here, maybe they had some check. You know, I'll take some check. I didn't fancy that, so I just simply defend the knight. And then now I'm very happy. Everything's covered up. I'm up a pawn, and I just start trying to trade pieces. So they try refuse the trade, and now bang, I'm hitting queen and bishop at the same time, forcing a trade of pieces. And yeah, we're, we're just better now. Uh, so they start trying to attack. I offer a trade of queens. Again, real, they're, you can tell they're very uncomfortable when you offer these trades. And here my opponent actually hung a pawn. And now who's attacking who, you know? This king looks a little bit open. So he pushes. I think this is a fatal flaw to open up my rook. Uh, my opponent here still in the realm of attacking me. And uh, I think he needed to shift his focus on defense. Because look at this now, the rook coming in. And again, I offer a trade of queens. <laughs> I'm up a pawn. I'm happy to go into this end game. Uh, hit the queen here. And I think I get to block here with Tempe on the queen. Beautiful. And then... The final move, guys. Spot the final move here. Give you a couple of seconds. Let me know in the comments if you found it. 
so it's knight to the center, taking away the king's escape squares, opening up the queen, centralizing the knight. Just a very nice all-round move, I think. And my opponent here resigned. I think that they actually just have to sack the queen. Like, that, if they lift the rook to try and escape, like, this is still checkmate. Uh, so, yeah. Just just devastating there for my opponent. So, just to recap, three things you need to remember. Uh, bishop to this square here to stop anything coming here. Pawn here with the same idea, stopping anything coming to this square. Uh, third thing, potentially this to negate the effect of the bishop. And yeah, th those are my three tips for defeating the Stafford. Um, yeah, anything else? And yeah, probably not castling into his attack. You can, but it's very, very sharp. I prefer to castle this way. So that, that was my four tips. Hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Hope you have a little less trouble dealing with those pesky Stafford Gambits. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.